Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of a truck. So that's a tractor-trailer combination, and for that we're going to use the 3D model generated by Vecto. Vecto is a tool created by the European Union to help manufacturers understand the impact of aerodynamic drag, mechanical resistance and so on on the fuel consumption or battery usage of their vehicle. We're going to run CFD simulations, so computational fluid dynamics, and for that we're going to use Airshaper. Let me show you how that's done. So you simply drag and drop the file into Airshaper, let it upload and you can use object files, STLs or step file and then you can hit the next button and it will be converted for easy viewing in your browser. Once it's converted, you'll just see the model online in your viewer. You can rotate, it works with non-manifold models, works with uh, 10,000 components and so on. So no need to simplify or repair, repair the CAT extensively. You just set a few basic parameters, whether it's on the ground or above the ground. So it's not a drone, obviously. Static for buildings, moving for vehicles. Behind the scenes, this means that the computational efforts will take a moving ground into account. Mathematical formulation. And you can also set the velocity. Imagine you're optimizing your truck for your country where you can go for perhaps 90 km per hour. You just enter that velocity. Put your truck in its reference position. This already is in its reference position. So just reference position, hit the set reference button. Afterwards, you can add a yaw angle to take into account side wind scenarios, which is also required by the EU regulations, for example, to analyze this. Um, and then this will still use the frontal surface area of the truck in its reference position. Um, but take into account the side wind scenario. Specify the units, this one is in millimeters. And then if you want, you can actually select the wheels, which means the software will automatically start detecting the wheels. And then after the wheels have been detected, which we can see now, it will actually calculate the central axis of rotation and the radius of each wheel. And based on that, together with the driving velocity of the vehicle, it will calculate the RPM. So you don't need to set the RPM yourself. If you want optionally, and this is also included in the Vecto 3D model, you can add radiators to the simulation. This model has three, I'm only going to set up one just to show you what it's like. So this is the radiator selected uh, inside actually the tractor of the truck. So we just need to provide two points on the pressure drop curve. Now the pressure drop curve indicates how much pressure drop, delta P in Pascal's here, you have a function of the flow velocity through the radiator. So if you have one point at one meters per second, which would yield a pressure drop of 10 Pascal's, and at two meters per second, you would have 30 Pascal's of pressure drop, then this is the only thing you need to provide. All of the other points on the curve will automatically be calculated by curve fitting. And that's it. So this is the only thing you need to do to set up a simulation. Then you will get to the order page. That means you can select an accuracy in this case. So basic is a very coarse simulation. It doesn't take rotating wheels into account or anything. But if you're comparing just a, a blocky shape uh, versus a rounded truck, uh, some very big changes, you can actually play around with the basic simulation, which is just 1 million cells, doesn't have a PDF report or anything. The regular simulation has 10 times more cells, so 10 million cells which means you get a lot more accuracy, you can start capturing details around the mirrors and so on, comes with a PDF report, includes the radiators, rotating wheels. This is what you typically would use uh, for conceptual analysis comparing different designs. And then if you're ready to move on to Vecto certified simulations, which is something you can do with Airshaper, um, the number of cells is actually on par with what they demand, um, the error bands, within which you need to fall if you run simulations on Vecto are also accomplished via Airshaper, via the advanced simulation. So that's how you set up a simulation at Airshaper. Once you launch it, everything will be pushed to the high-performance computing infrastructure, which means that simulations will use hundreds of CPUs, hundreds of gigabytes of memories, and then the results will be ready within, let's say, two to three hours for a regular simulation. So now let's have a look at the visualizations that come out of Airshaper and how we can use those to help us understand the aerodynamics and how we can possibly improve them. Let's go. So the first thing you see is the online visualization of results in your browser. You don't have to install anything, you can share it with others if you like. So the first thing here is what we call the pressure clouds. Technically, it's an isosurface of the total pressure coefficient for a value of zero. In normal terms, this is a visual indication as to where you are actually causing drag, where you have the biggest sources of energy loss. 
If you go front to back, we'll see that the mirrors, for example, cause quite a lot of drag. There's flow separation um, around the support elements. The mirrors themselves cause a lot of drag. And this really translates down meters actually downstream of the mirrors. So it's not just the drag on the mirror, it's also the disruption of the airflow that plays a crucial role. If you have gaps between different body panels, for example here at the front, you can see that this can cause flow separation. You can see flow going inside to the radiators here. The front bumper, let's say, has a sharp angle, so there's almost a 90 degree angle here, or actually even more, between the front face and the bottom face of this element, which means that the air hits the front, which creates a high pressure buildup, which is good for radiators, but for the flow itself, this creates a downward motion of the air locally, and then it has a lot of downward momentum, and then it has to actually curve around this geometry of the bodywork, which means it actually separates and then just reattaches further downstream, which means you have a separation area here, which is causing drag. The wheels are a typical source of drag. They rotate, so the top of the wheel is actually going at twice the velocity of the vehicle itself. So that's 180 km per hour in this case. So very important to try and shield this um, via an air curtain or by a wheel cover or even um, covering the entire wheel, as you would see on a Tesla Semi, for example. Next, we have the gap between the tractor and the trailer. This is a very important one. Um, so if the tractor and trailer are not well aligned, you'll have air hitting the front face of the trailer, for example, or if the tractor is sticking out too high, you're actually increasing the frontal surface area of your truck for a trailer, which is actually too small. So aligning these is actually quite important and still maintaining enough room uh, for the turning radius of the truck. If you go back to this one, you can see that the wheels, but also all of these elements on the truck, uh, sorry, on the trailer, are causing a lot of drag. There's a lot happening with the underfloor aerodynamics. So typically, these geometries are very dirty. Um, there's a lot of geometry sticking out, disrupting the airflow. So this is all separated airflow and causing a lot of drag. We'll later on see that adding side skirts uh, can really help uh, to reduce this. Then at the end of the trailer, we come to this sharp edge, so it's a boxy shape, boxy shape. but um, this wake here is actually um, a whole lot of air that you're dragging along, and if you can manage the size and the shape of this wake, this is also a way of reducing drag, something we'll also see later on in this video. You can then look at the surface pressure, so the surface pressure is the force of the air acting perpendicular to the airflow. Here you can see that at the front, the air hits the front face and comes to a near complete standstill, which gives you the stagnation pressure here at the front. And then the air evacuates left, right, top and bottom and curves around the edges of the front cabin. Now, as the air curves around these edges, um, it speeds up. And because of the Bernoulli equation, this means that you'll have a low pressure area there. Uh, so quite important to get this one right and to maintain attached flow so that you don't detach uh, during this uh, high speed uh, transition. Then um, if we continue, we can see that there's low pressure areas around sharp edges, for example, where again the air needs to curve around it. We can see that some of the tires are still facing high pressure because the air hits them full on. So working with air deflectors can be very useful. Uh, small spoilers here um, to guide the air downward so it actually doesn't hit the tires full on can be something that helps to reduce drag. If you, understand, if you want to understand where you have separated airflow, you can look at, have a look at the surface friction. So surface friction can be low when there's low relative velocity between the air and the surface, which can happen either in a stagnation area. So here at the front, the air slows down and piles up, and that's why you have low surface friction. It doesn't mean it's separated flow. But if it's air in the wake of an object which has disturbed the flow, like the mirrors, you can see that this separated flow area really extends far downstream of the actual object causing the disturbance. You can also see this at the corners where the air tries to reattach on the uh, trailer. The bottom of the truck is completely detached. Uh, the airflow is completely detached uh, because of all these geometries and so on. Uh, and of course, the rear of the truck is also fully detached airflow. If you look at the streamlines, we can get a 3D visual understanding of how the airflow actually curves around the truck. 
You can see here that there's some air going underneath the truck in between the wheels and then exiting from the sides. There's air diving into these gaps in between the truck and the trailer, uh, track and tractor. Um, so all kinds of insights that you can generate, uh, just see how much air is actually going via the top, how much is going via the sides. You can analyze the underfloor aerodynamics um, using this visualization here at the bottom. Uh, so really interesting to see that the air really slows down a lot underneath the truck. Uh, so cleaning up the underfloor is one of the key areas to reducing drag. There is a rough indication of wind noise. It is not a full acoustic simulation. These are steady state simulations using a K Omega SST RANS model which means that this is just an approximate noise estimation using an acoustic analogy, which is basically a mathematical formulation to translate turbulent kinetic energy into noise energy. But it gives you the biggest sources. Typically, these, these mirrors are a big source. Um, the, the, the gap between tractor and trailer and the wheels, obviously, uh, are a big source of noise. And last but not least, the wake behind the truck, where you have a lot of turbulence. If you specified radiators, you can actually start analyzing them by clicking on them. Uh, so that's quite interesting. The nice thing is that these color codes, they illustrate how much airflow you have through the radiator. And it's nice to see that the grill that you have in front of the radiator actually blocks the flow and it hasn't fully recovered to a uniform flow by the time it gets to the radiator. So you'll see areas on the radiator with low flow rates, uh, which is the blue here. And then the red is actually the high flow rate region. This is the second radiator, this is the first radiator, the smaller one. You can toggle between showing the velocity or showing the pressure buildup. Uh, so typically where the pressure is high, you'll have a high flow rate through the radiator as well. You can also look at the overall quantities. So there's an average of the velocity, which is 2.9 meters per second here. And there's also a total value for the pressure at the front and at the rear of the radiator. And this delta pressure, delta P, actually determines the flow rate, which is 0.81 cubic meters per second in this case. Now, the nice thing is that even though the simulation itself doesn't take thermal effects into account, if you have this flow rate and you know the pressure differences of your cooling fluid uh, or the temperature of your fluid and the temperature of the air, um, you can actually calculate the cooling performance of your radiator. Uh, so really important to optimize this because if a cooler is too big, you're wasting aerodynamic drag feeding air through the cooler. If it's too small, you're actually losing cooling capacity. Uh, and that's not efficient for your drivetrain. Then last but not least, there's also an option to analyze the individual forces on the um, trailer, for example. So we don't, you don't have to split anything yourself. The software will split. Uh, the 3D model into separate components or just copy your component structure if you upload an object or a step file and then you can analyze the drag for each individual component um, by clicking on them. That's the one thing. Another thing you can do is download the full simulation data or you can have a look at the PDF report. So this full simulation data you can analyze yourself in Paraview which is a free and open source uh, software package um, to analyze or visualize scientific data like this, but then you can make custom streamlines and so on. And the PDF report, let's have a look at that one as well. So the PDF report summarizes everything that was done during the simulation. It summarizes the number of cells. This is just a little over 60 million, which is what you need for vector simulations as well. Then we calculate the frontal surface area automatically and we show the meshed model. So this one is actually quite accurate. Um, the reason for this is that not only it's a high resolution, it also uses what is called an adaptive mesh refinement technique, which means the simulation will first run at a lower mesh count. And then based on the intermediate results, the algorithm will automatically refine the mesh locally where the gradient of pressure is high, at the front, for example, um, or where the vorticity is high, which is typically happening in the wake. So there's quite a big uh, improvement in mesh quality automatically. Then you get the forces. So there's a drag force, the lift force and lateral force. If you do side wind analysis, then you'll see the side force really becoming uh, important. There's also pitch, roll and yaw moments, which will help you understand what the stability of the truck is like, or at least which aerodynamic forces are driving the stability. There's convergence information here, uh, which is detected automatically. And then there's the length of the averaging window, um, because it's important to average the results across a high number of iterations to get a reliable average value. So you don't look at a peak or a low of the flow. 
then the drag coefficient is calculated automatically and then all of the other visualizations are actually available online in the uh, viewer as well. Now coming back to the platform, what's also interesting is that when we compare the base case to actually optimized cases, which are also being provided by Vecto. So this is the base case. You can see there's a lot of turbulence, uh, flow disturbance around the wheel and a large wake. The first optimization is when they actually added a side cover. Uh, LSC stands for long side cover, which is added to the truck and this helps to clean up the flow around the wheels. So if you compare this to this one, this one had a lot of flow problems around the wheels and a drag coefficient of 0.431. With the side covers, the drag coefficient drops to just 0.407. Keep in mind these are generic models. Real trucks will probably have a higher drag coefficient because of detailing and so on. But really interesting to see how much drag you can actually take out of the system by adding these side skirts. A second variation is when we actually add a tail. So TRF stands for tall rear flaps um, attached here to the tail and these help to actually guide the flow downward and feed the, the air into the wake so that the wake size is actually reduced. And if we again compare this to the reference case, a drag of 0.431 and a wake which stays quite high and horizontal, the new case actually helps to pull down the air and reduce the size and the drag coefficient goes down to 0.41. And of course you can combine this one with the flaps on the side or the covers on the side to further reduce the drag. So really nice tool, really nice models by Vecto and if you use these models as a reference it's really interesting uh, to start building your own add-ons and so on for trucks or to analyze your own trailer to see uh, where it falls within the um, regulations, drag coefficients and so on. So that was it for this short analysis on how to use CFD simulation results to help you understand the aerodynamics and how to possibly improve the design of your vehicle. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want, drop a comment or start a discussion with us to discuss your project. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.